What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now Plus. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to jump in on this Jason Schreier versus uh, CD Projekt Red versus Cyberpunk situation. This happened sometime in the Friday-Saturday range. I guess Jason Schreier published a massive, you know, one of his uh, really big pieces where he goes out, he interviews all these different people, and he published a really, really big piece that I think happened Friday, although I didn't see it Friday, so maybe it was probably because I don't follow him, so maybe that's the reason, but this created quite a stir, especially, um, I, I obviously online but over the weekend okay when CD Projekt Red basically then went back after him and said like okay look we read the thing and you have a lot of things that you you've messed up so I want to talk about both sides to it talk about kind of where I stand now if you guys know me if you guys have watched the channel for a long time you should know uh, me to Jason Shire I don't like the guy I don't like the guy personally I don't like any of his beliefs or opinions or anything like that I again I don't even like how he uh, you know acts and, and and kind of portrays himself online but the one thing that I do very much respect about the guy that I do like about him is the whole leaks and breaking stories and stuff like that. He does a phenomenal job and he normally is very, very, he's good at it. He is one of the, you know, he's the first person to get the scoop on a lot of these things. So he does have his place. Okay. And uh, I do believe him. So like a lot of the stuff that he wrote in cyberpunk or for cyberpunk in, in this, uh, I, I don't even know what you would want to call it, right? This piece. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't want to call it a hit piece, but I mean, technically it kind of is, but I do believe him. And then when CD Projekt Red, you know, comes back at him, uh, I do think I think I, like, I get what they're saying and so let's go over some of the things so I would say the biggest two things is he interviewed I believe 20 people that were either former employees or still employees a lot of now even uh, CD Projekt Red pointed this out only one of them wasn't anonymous so one of them gave their names the other 19 didn't and they could have all been former employees and he talked to them about like do you think the game was ready or like what was the game going to be ready to go and they all said no they all said like their belief was it was not ready and they shouldn't have done it and then CD Projekt Red in the counter to that had said that well that was again uh, one person was named the other 19 weren't almost to state that he was like making up those 19 which I really just don't you know again I don't like him but I just don't think he did that I think he actually did talk to 19 other people it's just they didn't want to say their names probably because they left and they want jobs somewhere else so they're not going to publicly you know what I mean they're not going to do that so I do believe that I'm, I'm not going to side with CD Projekt Red there uh, and then that they said that you know that's not the full group that's not the full 500 people right if you maybe if you ask more people they'll say it was ready I mean again it seemed not even just from Jason Schreier but it seems like from what we've seen in the gaming industry a lot of people knew that that game wasn't ready and even in the apology video the the head I don't even remember his name but he remember he said that it was his call along with the board's call to release this game and he even said do not blame the development team so even right there was almost an acknowledgement of like they were doing all the things that you could have ever asked them to do they were making the game we said that the game wanted to go at this time and they did it because we told them to you know what I mean so even in that apology which was just a few days before that they basically admitted that it was their call it wasn't the development team's call because it wasn't ready so I don't know how you can come after him for saying something like that that was a little and again I don't I don't like siding with him so it's, it actually pains me to say these things um but that is just a situation in, in that way the second thing was the the uh, e3 demo so the 2018 e3 demo which a lot of people will look at and when you know when the game came out you guys have probably seen I'll try and show it to you guys uh, during this video that's the thing that everybody looked to so when the game came out and it just wasn't you know remotely firstly it wasn't remotely close to that but secondly it wasn't even you know it was uh, obviously all over the place you saw a lot of the memeing kind of video stuff of like that comparing it to 2018's okay e3 which was very ambitious a lot of people have compared it to watchdogs which I don't think is all that unfair right remember watchdogs that e3 trailer was in my opinion that gameplay presentation was like the greatest thing i've ever seen in my life i don't even think legion can even get close to to what that did still right and then remember the game came out and it just was nowhere near as close well the story with that that jason Trier says is that it was completely fake that they just did not that was nothing of that was actually real they came up with that that took them many many months in which uh people that worked for them had even said like hey we shouldn't be wasting our time making something that's fake and making something that's not even in the base game when we could be working on the base game and so that's that's his side of the story and then the demo came out or the e3 presentation came out and obviously very few of those things made it into the base
base game. Now what CD Projekt Red countered again was that they don't make the games straight through, right? The games are not just you know made. You know we do the beginning part, then we do the middle part, then we do the ending part. It's all over the place, and and that's and they said that that's the whole point of that it's not a representation of the final version and how the game itself does run and perform much much better than that demo did. So you know with this one it's a little bit more tough, but I feel like they're kind of arguing, or at least CD Projekt Red is arguing a different thing. So Jason Shire's point is a lot of the mechanics, a lot of the like features, like with the police and all of those again like underlying mechanics, let's call it of the game that were in, that were shown in that trailer in that presentation are not in the base game. So that was his point, which is true. And again, that's kind of the exact same thing with Watch Dogs where like you watch that first uh, gameplay and he's doing Aiden is doing things that you flat out cannot do or they're not or like the things going on around him just are not present in the base game. Okay? And so it's kind of the same thing. It's like, yeah, you know, the game may it, it's a small little portion and sure maybe you you optimized it and the game itself does run better than it because the game itself had a ton of time to be worked on but the point is you didn't have that stuff in it and so again that's where i kind of you know that's that's where i look at cd project red statement you know in reverse where they say yeah well you know, some of those things did make it, some of it didn't, but we didn't make it in a linear way, and the base game does run and perform better than that. Uh, but again, I think the point is there just were a lot of mechanics in that demo that were not in the base game. You know, whether or not it ran better, that's not even, you know, that's not the point. But again, I think that's just because it's like, okay, well, that's people on the screen at one time where there were a lot of, remember that that gameplay, there was a lot of civilians on the like on the sidewalk, whereas in the base game, and it's something that really surprised me because going into this, remember, one of my main gripes with this game aren't even like the bugs and all that kind of stuff because I didn't experience all that many of them and one of my biggest uh, things that just really hurt me like to see in this game is that I imagine this game being uh, just so full of life and being so lived in right and I kind of got that because of what was talked about and also what we had seen of cyberpunk you know leading up to its release and then when it comes out there's like five people on the street maybe max right a lot of them just dis you can walk down roads and there'll be like one car and there'll be maybe one person, and that's it. You know what I mean? So it's, it, it doesn't really feel like there's anything there. So I, you know, I got myself built up, you know, in what I thought this game was going to be based off of those demos, which had, like, a livable world going on. You know what I mean? So I didn't read the full thing. I'm not going to give Jason Trier that kind of credit. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just not. But, no, I really, I, I'm siding with him here. I mean, you look at the situation of these uh, of this game, and uh, I, I believe him. I believe he did a really good job uh, with this piece. It, it's clear, again, the game just... Now, now again, like that was a bombshell. The the fact of the the demo was literally fake. Now most of them, and this is kind of what people have said in the, as well over this weekend. Most times you do that, they also are fake. In fact, I believe the story with God of War is that uh, remember that first gameplay presentation of God of War? They literally created that from scratch for that presentation. But they literally one upped it by making the base game better than it. So. You know, even if even if every single thing in that first God of War gameplay wasn't in the base game, it was still better overall. There was more. They, they you know, what I mean, they really won up themselves. Whereas for Cyberpunk, you know, even if that sequence, say that we saw, or those things like specifically that we saw in that gameplay were not in the base game, that's okay as long as you make the base game like better. If the base game was just a, a really good game overall, it would be fine. But the fact is, a lot of those mechanics aren't in the base game, and the base game just is no near as good again you know what i mean as the, the the presentation and it's one more time the exact same thing as Watch Dogs. if Watch Dogs was just a really amazing game you know they would have been fine but instead it was a subpar game and then you look and you say man you know that demo that they showed that was way better than this base game and that's where you get those those issues right if you say that out loud that's probably a negative thing and that's what's happened here uh with cyberpunk so you know i just wanted to throw my hat in in the ringer there i, I saw this over the weekend thought it would be a pretty it is a big deal i would say overall so i wanted to give my my impressions of it so let me know in the comments below guys what do you think do you are you astounded are you shocked uh, at the whole like they faked the the e3 demo thing let me know as always make sure you guys are subscribed to this channel hit the bell icon so you guys know when all these videos go up and I do a brand new video every single day on this channel and so I hope to see you guys for tomorrow's video